Even lit by the moon, this house may not look spooky. But just ask the next door neighbor if the house is haunted. She once lived here with a roommate. She heard footsteps in the hallway and then she heard somebody trying to rattle the door like they were trying to get it open. So when she went to open the door, there was nobody there. That roommate went back to bed. Then it happened again. She got up, got her stuff, and went stayed at a friend's house for the remainder of the night. Weber believes a Ouija board game may have attracted the spirits. They had seen a man, a woman, and a child. Weber eventually moved out. She just looked at me, and then I turned away, and then I looked back, and she was gone. 16-year-old Courtney Threat says the apparition of a woman in a white dress appeared in the attic as her family moved in. And then I saw a little girl, and she was giggling. Her mom wasn't a believer until... I felt a tug on my hair, and I had turned around to, you know, tell my husband to quit, and there was nobody there. Hey, James. The family turned to the paranormal group Louisiana Spirits. Bess Maxwell led the team. You're looking at three cameras. This one is in the attic. The other cameras monitored the dining room and Courtney's bedroom. She has reported seeing an apparition of a man outside looking in the window. Then came lights out. If that thing just goes off and all the rest of us are just sitting here and nothing is happening, then something is over there. LA Spirits and its members say so far in their investigations they have not had much luck when it comes to video evidence of any paranormal activity. But they do say they've had plenty of audio proof in the form of something called EVPs, electronic voice phenomenon. Believers say EVPs are typically short, like a word or phrase. Maxwell says an EVP from this house back in December is a voice possibly saying, I'm Gilbert. Listen again. The LA Spirits team hoped their second visit here delivered a better EVP. We'd like to talk to the family up here if that's possible. But just as this EVP session started, word came Courtney's mom had been attacked downstairs. You see the three marks? Amy Crone says she'd been sitting at the computer desk. Right about that time I got scratched and I said, I said, ow. Crone appeared visibly upset. I'm angry. You're angry that I picked on you? Yeah, whatever this is, stepped over a line. But LA Spirits case manager, John Combs, says detailed audio analysis appears to capture the sound of a drawer opening where Crone had sat and then closing after she was scratched. Amy Crone insists something attacked her. Jeffrey OK, KSLA News 12. The incident has captured the attention of Chinese media. Theories about the UFO's identity are burning up on the internet. As UFO sightings go, this one was as good or as weird as it gets. Some Chinese residents are on edge this morning after another apparent UFO sighting. It's the second one in two weeks. People described it as seeing a wide circular formation in the sky. I don't, I don't like to be scared. I, I just can't take it. It's, you know, I don't know what it is. Speaking of scared, uh, they're, they're extra dimensional beings. In this syndicated radio broadcast from 1997, the caller claimed to have worked at Area 51. They want the major population centers wiped out. Moments later, something knocked the national broadcast off the air. UFOs are no stranger to people living right here in the Arklatex. It was just a teardrop shape stationary in the sky. This Shreveport Bossier businesswoman, who we'll call Renee, wanted to stay anonymous, fearing ridicule for going public with her UFO sighting. I believe people think you're seeing things or you drink too much. Something. <laughs> Renee says what she saw looked otherworldly. It looked like a 
tear in the atmosphere. The west side of that tower, we just, just see several lights hovering. Tina Marie of Houghton spotted those lights while driving on I-220 one night while heading to work as a law enforcement dispatcher. Grab my phone, turn my camera on, stuck it up here and just took a picture <laughs> and sent it to KSLA. <laughs> this is her picture. To me, it seemed like it was separate things, just, you know, close together. They weren't exactly spaced perfectly. Her theory? Possibly helicopters from Barksdale Air Force Base. I'm standing right outside of the north gate of Barksdale Air Force Base, where you might say there is a one-time UFO sitting in plain sight. I'm talking about the SR-71 Blackbird. Went into duty back in 1966. Operational, the final units, until 1998. Declassified top speed, at least 2,200 miles an hour, Mach 3.3. Funny thing is, the Air Force never did say what, if anything, replaced it. One candidate, a reportedly top secret military aircraft, the TR-3B or Flying Triangle. If that thing is real, then that, that's a lot of uh, misidentified right there. Reggie Buck heads the Mutual UFO Network in Louisiana and recalls a sighting in Natchitoches from 10 years ago by a former NASA engineer. Instead of most triangles that you see will be, you know, flat, these were flying like shark fins up like this. And they were like, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, in, in an order. Oh, my God. Disclosure is very close, and the American people need to prepare themselves very soon for an announcement from our government. If or until that day arrives, we wait and keep our eyes on the skies. Jeff Farrell, KSLA News 12. Giving you a few taps on the head a few times. Surrounded by statuettes and symbols of her faith, 72 year old Sandra Abrahams of Lake Charles, Louisiana, will never forget the day she died. I went to the ceiling and I'm watching him working on my body. Abraham's doctor worked frantically to save her life inside that Houston area emergency room, but her body's allergic reaction to medication ultimately stopped. Sandra's heart. I heard the doctor yelling, I'm losing her. And then a whole list of curse words, I'm losing her. Abraham says her soul then floated through the ceiling and into a tunnel. Heaven is another dimension because I could hear the roar as I was going in. Sandra describes seeing sparkling lights while being whisked through that long, dark tunnel. And I was told some were angels and some were other souls in transit. When she arrived at the light, Jesus stood before her. He showed me everything. I showed my life from the time I was a tiny child, the first two angels that were given to me as guardians. Sandra says Jesus waved his arm and she spotted hell below her. The souls that are in there, when they come up out of the fires, they're horrible looking, and you hear them screaming and screeching, and they're still cursing God. But Abrahams also describes seeing purgatory. Purgatory is the in-between heaven and hell. Purgatory, says Sandra, has many levels. It goes from the darkest, blackest area where those are the souls that have murdered, done horrible things, but at their last moment of their life, they ask forgiveness. Well, that was 1969. Sandra says her own grandmother then appeared, someone she'd never met in life. And she had a message for Sandra's mom. I gave my mother the message. and She said there was no way I could have known that unless I had actually seen her mother. Abrahams was then given what can only be described as a frightening vision of the future. Devastation, horrible, bodies everywhere, death, death, death. That's all I kept thinking was death. She said that Earth seemed tilted somehow and in chaos. Where mountains had been, there weren't mountains anymore. Mountains were somewhere else. Where there was rivers and lakes and oceans before, they had been changed. They were somewhere else. It was like we'd been turned upside down or something. It was just crazy. 
Abrahams was later told that she'd been dead just a few minutes, even though it felt more like days to her. And she returned with a message. If we didn't get back on the right track and put God first, that there would be horrible destruction throughout the world. But Abraham says she's seen nothing in her four decades since that vision that makes her think mankind has changed a bit. Still, she speaks whenever she can to the public, not knowing when our day of reckoning might come. Jeff Farrell, KSLA News 12. Beyond the threshold of death, many people brought back to life later describe visions of an afterlife, similar to this scene from the 1995 film Hideaway. It shows a soul's journey to another realm of existence. You could legitimately call me one of the world's leading skeptics of near-death experience when I started my research. But 25 years and 3,000 case histories later, radiation oncologist Dr. Jeffrey Long of Houma, Louisiana, has come to one startling conclusion. Near-death experience is, in a word, real. Dr. Long wrote the New York Times bestseller, Evidence of the Afterlife, The Science of Near-Death Experiences, and has made several national TV appearances, including the Today Show. Do you believe in life after death? One man says he has scientific proof it is true. What is the proof? Well, my research reveals nine lines of evidence about the reality of near-death experiences and their consistent message of an afterlife. Near-death skeptics argue the phenomenon is nothing more than the final gasps of a dying brain that hallucinates or creates a dreamlike state. Many others, like a psychiatry professor here at LSU Health Sciences Center in Shreveport, describe NDEs as an unsolved mystery. The bottom line is that people who believe in the near-death experience are, are going to believe in it and the people who don't aren't. Dr. Long insists the mystery of near-death experiences cannot be explained by a dying brain. The elements of the near-death experience are highly organized, highly lucid, and follow a typical and very logical pattern throughout the entire experience. And he says this dying brain hypothesis breaks down in dozens of well-documented near-death cases he's investigated. There is no way any brain function can explain a near-death experience while, you're, that, while your heart stops while you're under general anesthesia. Impossible. Those crystal clear near-death memories typically begin with an out-of-body experience. And I thought, boy, this is neat, you know? I can't wait to get back and tell my husband. Near-death survivor Sandra Abrahams recalls floating above her body shortly before being whisked through a long, dark tunnel and toward a light. Forty years after her experience, Abrahams speaks to others nearing death and offers advice to those afraid of what's next. And I tell them, you've got to go to the light. That's the first thing. Don't just stay in there in darkness. Go toward the light because the light is Christ. While Dr. Long never researched Abraham's near-death experience, perhaps the most compelling cases that prove an afterlife to him involve blind people. Because people born totally blind to whom vision is unknown and unknowable throughout their entire life have described highly visual and typical near-death experiences. Skeptics also argue that religious beliefs may influence near-death experiences. So Dr. Long found a subgroup of cases with little, if any, exposure to religion. Very young children. So what I conclude from my research is that near-death experiences seem to be completely unrelated to cultural upbringing, to religious beliefs or expectations, and really even any understanding of what a near-death experience is. Jeff Farrell, KSLA News 12. I hear you don't believe in me. Hollywood movies are about as close as most of us will ever get to an exorcism. But we wanted to get a closer look in the real world. So we traveled here to Kansas, Oklahoma, well beyond the gates of Hollywood. This is Jeff Farrell with KSLA News 12. 
I'm here to see the Mannings. Okay. This is very secluded. This is the same path that a Roman Catholic Monsignor had already traveled once for the initial interview and what became the first stages of an exorcism. It involves a woman who agreed to speak with us before the exorcist's second visit. Are you Kevin? Yes, sir. Hey, Jeff Farrell. Jeff, how you doing? Good. Once inside, Kevin Manning began explaining that his wife, Tina, is always tired. We just tell him the truth. What's that? How you were getting lazy. He thought I was getting lazy because every time he was home, all I wanted to do was sleep because it's the only time I felt comfortable sleeping. Was when he's home. Yes. Truck driving keeps Tina's husband gone for days at a time in an empty house. Except she fears it's really not so empty and even responsible for her possible demonic possession. Do you ever get the feeling that the demon has, is talking through her? Um, when she gets angry, because she doesn't get angry. And her anger has been building. Yeah, when I get angry now, my head feels like it's going to explode. I just, I, I'm trying real, real hard not to go crazy. But, of course, anger alone is not a clear sign of possession. Warner Brothers Pictures' new release, The Right, it's not the devil. Begins with a skeptical priest. She's a very, very sick girl. She doesn't need a priest, she needs a shrink. Who agrees to study under a renowned exorcist at the Vatican. And even the movie describes valid cases as very rare. That's exactly what the Mannings thought, too. In fact, her husband says the exorcist, in her case, wasn't sure she was possessed for sure until he came to the house to investigate paranormal activity that had been increasing in frequency and intensity. But their skepticism ended quickly when the exorcist put his hand atop her head and began reciting Latin prayers. She gasped and her head went like that and he just stayed with it and he never broke stride. And then all of a sudden her whole body, her stomach started going crazy and she started crying like crazy. It felt like my, my head was being stretched off my shoulders, like somebody was pulling my head off. It was enough to convince Kevin. I saw the hand of God and I saw the, the hands of what the devil can do. But unlike the horror classic, The Exorcist, which featured everything from spinning heads Did you do that? Uh. To levitation, experts say you likely won't see those supernatural theatrics in the real world. The Mannings do report seeing writing spontaneously appear in front of them on a shower stall door, and orbs captured on recent photos they believe to be spirits. Then there are the shadows. We've seen, like, the size of a cat, a black thing, just going up the wall, hovering around, going up the ceiling and taking off. We arrived here at the Manning home in Kansas, Oklahoma, three days before the planned exorcism by the Catholic Church. The Mannings hope that such an ancient rite of exorcism will get rid of most of their problems. They're also hoping that moving in about two weeks will end the rest. But since our visit, bad weather has repeatedly delayed that planned exorcism. And even in their new house, Tina Manning reports strange activity, like mysteriously slamming doors their first night. Jeff Farrell, KSLA News 12.